Good morning, everyone. Thank you for all those who are able to join me for our morning day texts. We usually meet around 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time so we can progressively work our way through the biblical books and letters, as well as at times consider other related texts and histories so that we can better our knowledge and understanding of the past, specifically the past as it relates to the god Jah and the one whom we believe he sent to the earth, Jesus, who lived as a man and who did the will of Jah all the way to death. So we look to him as a guide in order to please the god Jah, to do the things that he wanted, wants us to do so that we can have a good life now and hopefully a happy, uh, fulfilling life in the future. All right, so we're reading the letter of 3rd John. We've already read through the entire letter of 1st John, and we've read the entire letter of 2nd John, both of which I've translated, as well as the letter of 3rd John, which we're going to read now, or at least part of it today, and then the rest of it tomorrow, or in our next day text, which should be tomorrow. But check the schedule in case any changes come up. So the letter of 3rd John, as you know, with each new book or letter that we consider, I go over the, the manuscript support or the reasons why we have confidence in the text that was written about 2,000 years ago. So when it comes to the letter of 3rd John, it's represented in Codex Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, and Alexandrinus, 4th century, 4th century, 5th century, respectively as well as the Codex Ephraimi Rescriptus of the 5th century, Uncial, or all capital letters, uh, Manuscript 0251 of the 6th century. And of course, there are other texts that also contain portions of, of 3rd John. But that's a, um, a basic summary of, of some of the best evidence that we have for the letter we're going to read. I've updated the description below, so you could take a look at that in terms of uh, the manuscript support on your own. And now let's take a look at the text. So I'll be reading uh, verses 1 through 8 of 3 John. Sometimes I'll read th a straight through and then talk about it. And other times I'll just stop and make a comment um, as we do the reading. So if you have any questions, you're free to put them down. Otherwise, let's take a look at 3 John. Okay, he starts off writing to the older one. Well, he's referring to himself as the older one. But he's writing to Gaius, which is a common Roman name, a Latin name. And it may also be the same individual to whom Paul, uh, or, or of whom Paul speaks in Romans 16, 23, who was, uh, you know, a Christian who hosted other Christians, many other Christians, according to Paul. Take a look at Romans 16, and you'll see many, uh, several references to different Christians alive at the time, one of whom is Gaius. Okay, so he's, he's writing to Gaius, whom he loves in truth. You're going to see that, that expression, truth, or in truth, something about truth, several times in these eight verses. Okay, so he's writing to Gaius, whom he loves in truth. In verse 2, he says, Dearly loved one, I pray you become successful and firmly grounded in all things, the way your life is already going well. And this Gaius, remember, he was one, it appears to be the same as in Romans 16, who was able to host congregations of, of Christians, regularly receive them and take care of them. This is why John writes to him this way. This is right, why Paul writes to him so affectionately in Romans 16. So there were individuals during this time who had an abundant means of life, and who used it well. And this is why John, Jesus' beloved disciple, prays that he becomes successful and grounded in all things, right? Not just spiritual things, but because he's using his material things so well and helping the congregations, you can understand why John is expressing well wishes and prayers for everything this guy does. Because he's not misusing the things Jah has given him. He's in fact using them to help promote the Christian uh, congregation. And then in verse 3 he says, I became extremely joyful 
when brothers arrived and testified about you with truth. Not expressing in truth. In truth in verse 1, with truth, verse 3. To the extent you are living by truth. In truth, with truth, by truth. Verse 4, I have no greater joy than this, that I should hear my children are living by the truth. Verse 5, dearly loved one, whatever it is you choose to bring about for the interests of the brothers, especially when they are foreigners, you do a faithful thing. Now, oftentimes today we have difficulties involving people who are from other nations. And so as Christians, we're not really, we're citizens of nations because of our birth, but we're really citizens belonging to the nation uh, that is from heaven. And so we belong to John Jesus in that way, and we live on the earth as ambassadors representing them, but we also have to be involved in ways with the world so that we can survive. But when we meet people who are having difficulty, whether they're people like us or people from other nations, as Christians, we're supposed to help those people, especially brothers and sisters in faith, right? We cannot account for every foreigner or we wouldn't even we don't even really know which foreigners may be breaking the law, causing problems or just trying to earn a better life, a better living and have a better life. But we know when people are Christian or they're trying to do or please God, do God's will, please God, follow Jesus. They're already going through so much difficulty that as Christians, we should do everything we can to try to help them especially if they're foreigners, because they're going to have an even more difficult time in a nation that is even less familiar or friendly to them. But we don't do that to such an extent that we then bring shame on the name. In other words, we don't promote breaking the law or abuse of other people. All the the very basic things that none of us would really want done to us. We don't promote the things we don't want done to us. Nor do we encourage others to hurt other people by breaking the law or damaging them in any other way. But not everybody does those things. There are plenty of people who go from one nation to another for various reasons and who are just trying to be good people, good citizens of that nation, and cultivate love or affection. So we know Christians are more likely going to be people like that. We still have to evaluate them, right? We cannot accept every single person without some evaluation. And that's why John right here, he says, verse three, I became extremely joyful when brothers arrived and testified about you. See, he's not just writing to Gaius because he's someone with money or someone who can help them, you know, build Christian groups. The brothers testified about him and they told John what Gaius was about, what he was doing, that he was living by the truth. Verse three. And he says in verse four, there's no greater joy than that, that he should hear that his children are living by the truth. Because right, what did Jesus say? If you're on the side of the truth, you listen to my voice. Jesus tells the truth. We tell the truth. Unless we're weak at times and we make a mistake and lie. We don't want to do that. Who wants to really have to lie? A lie is like, it's just desperation, right? It's the thing you do because you can't deal with what's really happening. And so you have to distort reality or pretend something else is actually happening in order to get your way. But then... Once people find out about the lie and that what you were saying wasn't grounded in the truth, well, they're just going to take away everything they gave you because of the thing you told them as if it were true. So the lie really only can bring you temporary satisfaction, I guess. I don't even know if I'd call it that because all the while you're going to be worrying about whether or not your lie will pass the test and people will find you out. You know, unless you're just going to disconnect from reality, which many liars do. It's the only way they can they can live with themselves. You're going to be burdened by that untruth and being discovered. Whereas if you just live by the truth and you did things right, even if it's more difficult, 
that difficulty results in a permanency or a, lo a greater longevity for the things you want. Whereas the lie, that's going to be surrounded by burden and carried with you your whole life until you confess it or deal with it or you die. So the lie is just this giant weight that, that you have to carry around and hope no one finds out, right? <laughs> it's terrible. You don't have that problem with the truth. The truth is the truth, and if we all live by the truth, well, we'd be on the side of Jesus for sure in terms of what he says. And if he's living by the truth, then what's so, what's, why do so many people not like him? It's because they're not living by the truth. They want to do things that are not correct. We all do that at times, right? But who wants to live incorrectly? We know when we do something, even if we want to do it, that it's bad because we're aware we make we, we have the knowledge of good and bad. We just we're weak. We get weak at times and we make mistakes. But who wants to live like that, right? Who wants to live weak with mistakes? burdening you all the time. No, that's why we confess our sins, mistakes. We move past it. We try to make corrections or we don't burden ourselves so much if it's not such an obvious sin, right? What other people might not do or choose to do. We're going to talk about that this Sunday on Open Session 7 as part of my pharmacia discussion. There are a lot of things people do or don't do that we could get caught up in or start judging them over. But we're supposed to be helping people by helping them live according to the truth and be successful. But that doesn't mean we can determine for them every single thing that is true. We live by three things. We worship Jah, we follow Jesus, and we treat others the way we want to be treated. So that's where you should focus. How do you want people treating you? Do you want them getting involved in your life and helping you make decisions about every single thing? Well, maybe if you really need that kind of help, but then, you know, you might have bigger issues. Otherwise, we're made in God's image. We're supposed to be making decisions based on the best available reasons and hopefully living according to the truth. If we make a mistake, we, we do something wrong or we don't live according to the truth, that should be temporary. That's not something we want to languish in, this, this uh, <laughs> lifestyle of untruth. That's not going to produce anything of benefit. And even non-Christians and others will eventually not respect you if they find out you're just a liar. Unless you're of the really deep level of badness in the world where lying is just the way things are. Right? <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. Because I don't want... I, I, you have to know if people are telling you the truth. And while we can't always know, just notice again, John's writing to Gaius. He was given testimony by the brothers about him with truth, that he's living with by the truth. He may be making mistakes. He may have imperfections. They know that. John wrote about that in 1 John, that if we had, we say we don't have sin, we're lying. So we wouldn't be able to live by the truth if we claimed we didn't have sin. But we don't then promote that sin. <laughs> we don't make it the primary aspect of our life in, in, and in our dealings with other people. That's, that's the unfortunate side of our life the times when we make mistakes. Okay, let's get back to the reading. Verse 4. So no greater joy than this. Children are living by the truth. Verse 5. Dearly loved ones. Whatever it is you choose to bring about for the interests of the brothers. Oh, I already read that one. Especially when they are foreigners, you do a faithful thing. Okay, that's good. So we reemphasize that. Verse 6. These ones testified about you with love before the gathered Christians. You will make them well when you send them forth in a manner worthy of God. Verse 7, because for the sake of the name they went out, though they received nothing from non-Jews. Verse 8, therefore we are obligated to take in these kinds of people so we may become joint laborers in truth. He's talking about the foreigners the Christians who are not from their area, but who are coming in and who are testifying about others. It says right there in verse 6, these ones, the foreigners, testified about you before the gathered Christians. So he's helping them appreciate the brotherhood that they have, regardless of national barriers. 
And they go out for the sake of the name, whether that's the divine name or the name given above every name, that is Jesus, to the glory of Jah, the Father. That's what they did it for. They're doing these things or did these things for the same reason we're doing these things and John did these things and that Jesus himself did these things. To live in a manner worthy of God, verse 6, and to help the brothers and sisters. He's writing to the brothers. He's writing to Gaius. But he, the, the, these letters often include women. We just read 2 John where he addresses the lady of the house. So we know that these brothers and sisters were working together closely, meeting with each other, testifying about each other, looking after each other's interests, praying for each other to become successful and firmly grounded in all things. Are we praying like that about each other? We should be. It may not always be easy to remember, but that's why we do these texts. <laughs> they help us remember. And if we ask for these things, what do you think will happen? Jah listens to us. He's already giving us things, bringing us together, helping us to learn more so that we can teach people, help foreigners who are not terrorizing other nations, and receive those who are going out for the sake of the name so we may become joint laborers in truth. How many times did we read truth in here? Let's just take a quick look. Verse 1. Love in truth. Verse 3. Testified about you with truth. To the extent you are living by truth. Okay, that's 3. Verse 4. Living by the truth. 4. <laughs> I don't want to miss it. Okay, and then, and then 5. Verse 8. We may become joint laborers in truth. Five times in eight verses. He uses the word truth and highlights it as the reason why he has so much joy, verse 3, and as the basis for why he accepts these people, because they're living by the truth. People testified about them, and they're working together in truth. They're not spreading lies. Do you get the sense here that they're working together in debates? Does it look like John or any of these Christians are joint laborers in argument. That doesn't mean they don't, of course, deal with people who object to the name or to Jesus and things. We know that. But that's not, they don't talk like that, right? They don't talk like, oh, let's go to the, the this anti-Trinity board and, oh, let's go respond to this argument and, oh, let's go seek out the Pharisees and scribes so we can teach them the truth. And <laughs> No, they don't talk about that at all. They're talking about each other. They're talking about living extremely joyful and, and greeting each other and taking in foreigners and living in a manner worthy of God, being joint laborers in truth, not joint laborers debating with others who don't teach the truth. We deal with them enough. We need to do more of this, joint laborers in truth with each other so that we can all be firmly grounded so that our way of life continues to go well, just like John references with regard to Gaius in verse 2. So these things are great for us to review because they give us a sense of the Christian community that we're a part of and that was existing in the first century. So uh, I'm very glad we're going through the letter of 1 John. It's one of those letters, I'm sorry, 3 John, one of those letters that you really often do not read because there's so much else to read. And it's one of these small texts tucked into the back of the New Testament. And so oftentimes it's just not a featured document. But for such a small document in terms of content, it contains a lot. So I believe we will be able to um, finish up. Oh, no, actually, I'm not sure. We may, uh, we may spend two more days in 3 John or I may finish it up tomorrow. And then we'll be ready to go into, um, we have the letter of Jude, actually, and then the letter of Revelation, or the, the Revelation, not the letter of Revelation. And so we've got a lot of good material coming up. And then this Sunday, I'm going to do an open session discussion where I will just basically talk about a couple uh, initial topics and then consider your questions. 
And one of the topics I will deal with is the Greek word pharmakia and associated issues involving um, medicines, drugs, and different things that people put under the umbrella of pharmakia. So that'll be one of the topics that I discuss. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm just looking at So. And the truth, what is the truth? That's like the same question. The truth is what Jah tells you. And what Jah tells you is the truth. How do we know that? Well, we can test it, right? How did Adam and Eve know that? Well, they died when he told them they would die if they did what he didn't want them to do. So we can, we can, what Jah says is truth. Jesus says only what Jah says. That's why he is the one we listen to for the truth. He is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. The organiza No organization of humans is the truth. The Watchtower falsely identifies itself as the truth. It shouldn't do that. It knows that. It knows it's lied or made mistakes in the past. We all have. But we don't all go in around calling ourselves the truth. That's Jesus. They're taking his name, the truth, and calling themselves that name. It's inappropriate, especially given all the things they've gotten wrong has nothing to do with whatever good they've done. They've helped, they helped me in the past when I was very young in my spiritual growth. But that any group will help you like that because you're young and you're still learning. And so you, you have to grow. My brothers and sisters, that question has already been answered, Mark. Who are my brothers, my sister, and my mother? Those who do the will of Jah. Is that not what Jesus told those who told him that his actual mother and brother and sisters were standing outside? And what did he do? Did he give them priority and say, okay, let them in, bring them in. You all clear out of the way. No. Who are my mother, my brother, my sisters? The ones who do the will of my father. So you should be focused on doing the will of the father, not the will of anybody else. No, I don't believe so, Mark. They have the exact same agenda. You don't give any actual examples. So please don't make comments like that that have no support whatsoever. If you just write a comment that say it seems like John and Jesus have two separate agendas, that's just a dumb comment, okay? You don't have any support. It's totally retarded in terms of what actually is taught in the Bible. And you're just disrupting our day text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little time to reconsider how you act on day text readings like this. And uh, we'll just remove you for a while, okay? Um, so what we need to do, folks, is, is not show up on these day texts and ask retarded questions. Okay, you should have learned a long time ago what you should ask and what you shouldn't ask and what you should say and what you shouldn't say on these day texts. And if you show up and you think you can say that John and Jesus seem like they have two different agendas, and you don't even have any basis for your comments, you're gone. Okay? You're not someone we're here to tolerate. And you're probably a very immature person who just has not spent any time really thinking about these things. Otherwise, you would never say those kinds of things. And I'm certainly not going to tolerate them on this channel. But uh, good luck to you, because that's apparently all you have. Either way, we're going to continue praising John Jesus cultivate in our brotherhood, stay firmly grounded in your way of life, teach the truth. Don't listen to other people who make retarded comments that they can't even support. All they do is think about ways to disrupt other people because they don't have anything to do. If they did, they'd be doing it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and may God bless you in Jesus' name.